Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today I want to talk about Ace Books. In the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, Ace Books created a line they called the Ace Science Fiction Specials. Series 1, 1968 to 1971. Series 2, 1975 to 1977. And Series 3, 1984 to 1990. The first series is legendary. Editor Terry Carr had an eye for new talent and new writing. This is an introduction to the third series of specials. And what I love about the third series of specials is that each book has an introduction by Terry Carr. Actually, I should say that the first eight do. We'll get to that later. Part of the introduction is the same in all books. And I'm going to read to you that beginning, which explains the A Science Fiction specials from series one and what Terry Carr is trying to do with the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 3. If you're getting a little tired of reading science fiction novels that are just like the ones you read last month or last year, this book is for you. It's published under the label An Ace Science Fiction Special, because it's just that, something fresh and different, and, we believe, a novel superior to most of those you'll find today. I'll tell you why I think so a little later. First, though, I should say a little about the Ace Science Fiction Specials series. The SS Specials program is specifically designed to present new novels of high quality and imagination, books that are as exciting as any tale of adventures in the stars and as convincing as the most careful extrapolation of the day after tomorrow's science. Add to that a vigorous insistence on literary quality, lucid and evocative writing, fully rounded characterization, and strong underlying themes, but not messages, and you have a good description of the stories you'll see in this series. The publishers of Ace Books believe that there are many readers today who are looking for such books, at a time when so many science fiction novels are simply skilled, or not so skilled, rehashings of plots and ideas that have been popular in the past. Science fiction, by its very nature, ought to tell stories that are new and unusual, but too many of the science fiction books published recently have been short on real imagination. They are, in fact, timid and literarily defensive. The Ace SF Specials are neither. The SF Specials began more than 15 years ago, when the science fiction field was in a period of creative doldrums similar to the present. Science fiction novels then were mostly of the traditional sort, often hackneyed and familiar stories that relied on fast action and obvious ideas. Ace began the series of SF specials with the idea that science fiction readers would welcome something more than that, novels that would expand the boundaries of imagination, and that notion proved to be correct. The books published in that original series sold well, collected numerous awards, and many of them are now considered classics in the field. Beginning in 1968 and continuing into 1971, the Ace SF specials included such novels as Past Master by R. A. Lafferty, Rite of Passage by Alexi Panshin, Synthajoy by D. G. Compton, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, Picnic on Paradise and And Chaos Died by Joanna Russ, Pavan by Keith Roberts, The Isle of the Dead by Roger Zelazny, The Warlord of the Air, by Michael Moorcock, The Year of the Quiet Sun, by Wilson Tucker, Mechasm, by John Sladek, The Two Timers, by Bob Shaw, and The Phoenix and the Mirror, by Avram Davidson, among many others that could be mentioned, but the list is already long. Most of those books were nominated for awards. Rite of Passage won the Nebula Award, the Left Hand of Darkness won both the Nebula and the Hugo. The Year of the Quiet Sun won the John W. Campbell Award. Other books in the series won more specialized awards. Most of the novels have remained in print over the years since they were first published. The original series ended when I left Ace Books and moved to California in 1971, but its successes hadn't gone unnoticed. Both writers and publishers saw that a more adult sort of science fiction could attract a large readership, and during the 70s, more venturesome SF novels were published than ever before. A number of critics have credited the Ace Science Fiction Specials with bringing about a revolution in SF publishing. And I like to think that this is at least partly true. 
but nothing would have changed if there hadn't been editors and publishers who wanted to upgrade the product. And in particular, it required science fiction writers who could produce superior novels. Fortunately, such writers were there. Some of them had contributed to the SF special series. Some had been writing quality of novels already. Samuel R. Delaney, Phil K. Dick, and Robert Silverberg are examples. And many writers of talent entered the science fiction field during this period who didn't feel constrained by the thud and blunder traditions of earlier SF. So, in the early 70s, science fiction was an exciting field. Quality SF novels appeared from many publishers. They sold very well, and science fiction moved toward the front of literary achievement. It was reviewed in the New York Times and analyzed by academic critics. Major universities offered courses studying science fiction. It seemed that science fiction had finally become respectable, but other trends began to be felt. And although they brought many new readers to science fiction, for the most part, they caused SF to look back instead of forward. The television series Star Trek attracted an enormous following, as did the Star Wars movies, Alien, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., and others. These products of the visual media introduced millions of people to science fiction, but though many were enthusiastic enough to buy SF books too, what they wanted were stories as simple and familiar as the films they had enjoyed. When they found science fiction books that were like the television and movie productions, they bought them in great numbers. When the books were more complex or unusual, sales were much lower. So in recent years, SF publishers have catered to this vast new market. The result has been that most of the science fiction published today is no more advanced and imaginative than the SF stories of the 50s or even the 40s. Basic ideas and plots are reworked time and again, and when a novel proves to be popular, a sequel or a series will come along soon. There's nothing wrong with such books. When they're well written, they can be very good. But when authors are constrained to write nothing but variations on the plots and styles of the past, much of the excitement of science fiction disappears. Science fiction is a literature of change. More than any other kind of writing, SF needs to keep moving forward if it's to be exciting. The novels in this new series of Ace SF specials do look forward rather than back. They're grounded in the traditions of science fiction, but they all have something new to add in ideas or literary development. And they are all written by authors who are comparatively new to science fiction, because it's usually the new authors who have the freshest ideas. Most of those novels in the original series that came to be called classics were written by authors who were then at the beginnings of their careers. On an aside, Notice that Terry Carr doesn't talk at all about the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 2. He only talks about the first series and then this new series. Ace Books asked me to edit this new SF special series because they believe the time is right for such adventurous books. The new readers who swelled the science fiction market in the last several years are by now familiar with the basic ideas and plots, and many of them will want something more. This new SF Specials series offers stories that explore more imaginative territory. So here we have the 12 Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 3, 1984 to 1990. Each one of these has an introduction. I think it's great to hear from Terry Carr before each book, but we only hear of Terry Carr's intro for the first eight books. The reason... Well, let's get a little bit of background information about Terry Carr from the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction by John Clute and Peter Nichols. Terry Jean Carr was a U.S. writer and editor. It was as an editor that he became and remained best known. In 1964 to 1971, he worked with Donald A. Wolheim at Ace Books, where he was responsible for the highly successful Ace Special Series. He also co-edited seven annual Best of the Year anthologies with Wolheim. After leaving Ace and becoming a freelance editor, Terry Carr continued to produce a Best of the Year anthology on his own, in competition with Wolheim's, commencing with the Best Science Fiction of the Year anthology 1972, and continuing through to 1987. Once again, his work ends in 1987. I think you can see what's happening here. In the 1980s, 
Terry Carr returned to Ace Books on a freelance basis to edit a second series of Ace Science Fiction specials, this time restricted to first novels. This is the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 3. The impact of this sequence was perhaps even greater than the first, for it included, in its first 18 months, William Gibson's Neuromancer, Kim Stanley Robinson's The Wild Shore, Carter Schultz's and Glenn Harcourt's Palimpsests, Lucas Shepard's Green Eyes, Michael Swanwick's In the Drift. In 1985-86, to 86, he won his third and fourth Hugos, both as best editor. What perhaps marked Terry Carr most distinctively was his quite extraordinary capacity to commission or purchase work which, once published, seemed inevitable. His authors seemed to speak to the heart of their times. Terry Carr passed away in 1987. So as we look through this series, I think he had a hand in commissioning the vast majority of them, but the last four were edited by Damon Knight. Time to take a look at the covers. Kim Stanley Robinson, The Wild Shore, 1984. Carter Schultz and Glenn Harcourt, Palimpsests, 1984. Lucius Shepard, Green Eyes, 1984. Howard Waldrop, Them Bones, 1984. William Gibson, Neuromancer, 1984. Winner of the Nebula and Hugo Awards, Michael Swanwick, In the Drift, 1985. These first six of 12 A Science Fiction Specials Series 3 had a specific graphic design. The next six were more colorful with a change in graphic design. Jack McDevitt, The Hercules Text, 1986. Lauren J. McGregor, The Net, 1987. Richard Cadry, Metrophage, 1988. Ted Reynolds, The Tides of God, 1989. Starting with this book, the series is edited by Damon Knight. Claudia O'Keefe, Black Snow Days, 1990. Gregory Feely, The Oxygen Barons, 1990. So join me in celebrating Terry Carr's career as I read through the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 3. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss one of these books. In my next video, I'll look at the first one, The Wild Shore by Kim Stanley Robinson. So have you read any of the books in the A Science Fiction Special Series 3? Which are some of your favorites? Are there any to rival the acclaim of Neuromancer by William Gibson? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.